Hello, we're going to have a look at some of the basics of Photopea today. So today we're going to work through a few of the techniques you'll need to do a full page magazine spread. So first thing you want to do is click on new project. You want to give it a name. So we're going to do a magazine cover. So for example, you might call your first attempt Mag V1 and that means magazine version 1. Um, Generally, it's a good idea as you're working on your project to save it multiple times. You know, even if you're doing like 20 minutes work, it's a good idea to save it. Then another 20 minutes, save it again. And each time you save it, you can have like V1, V2, V3. Now, the advantage of doing this is A, if there's a problem, you're not going to lose all of your work. And secondly, if you decide to change tack at any point, you can go back to an earlier version. So really useful. So I've set 22 centimeters here. It might well start at pixels for you. So you need to click in there, change it to centimeters, height of 30. And today I'm going to be working at 150 DPI. That's pretty good quality. Magazine quality is normally 300, but that's quite slow to work on. So I've set it to 150 for today. Next, you can choose the color of background. So you can start with a white background, a black, a transparent, or you can choose your own. If you do choose your own and you've got a good idea of what color background you want click on custom click in this box and you can choose whatever color you would like i'm going to go with black for today and then click on create so i've got my blank canvas now the next thing you'll need to do is find images that you think will fit with this and lots of different ones you could use i'm going to be doing like kind of a technology one so i'm going to drag in an image i've saved previously so if you download an image, you'll want to keep all of the images you've downloaded in like an images folder, and that just makes it super easy to find them quickly. Now to save time cutting lots of stuff out, it's quite handy to find images that match your background. So if you've got a white background on your magazine um, advert, you can use images that are on a white background. I've got a black background, so I've chosen to have um, an image which has got black in the background just saves you a lot of time now to resize this I've got these little handles here I can just left click and drag and that will resize my image to the size that I want now I can left click and hold and drag it in because I want him down sort of bottom left and again I'm going to make him a little bit bigger so he's nicely filling this corner of my um, screen now do be careful not to sort of squish your person or pull them out too thin. Um, what you can actually do is if you hold down Alt when you resize, it won't make the um, image sort of stretched and it will just resize nicely um, all in proportion. So if you hold Alt when you resize anything, you'll always get it all perfectly in proportion. Now when you finish, you can just double left click and that will go flat and we've got the beginnings of our magazine cover. Now, most magazines will have text over their covers as well. So I can click on the T here and I can click into this drop down box here and this will give me lots of different um, options for choosing different types of font faces. Um, I'm gonna choose this one here. I think it's called Erica one because it's quite bold and then you can choose your font size here make it as big as you want and in here you can choose your color for the font now i'm going to choose white because you always want to have your font um, easy to read so i could call this tech tips for example and there's my magazine cover now you'll notice this is a bit small I've chosen the maximum size and often you'll get this problem. You want to go with a bigger size font than you're allowed in here. A couple of ways you can deal with this. One of them is to click in the edit box, transform and then scale. And that will allow you to get your, um, your title for your magazine much, much, much bigger. I can then left click and hold down and move it. So it's, you know, in a nice position on the screen and boom got a nice big title for it. One more thing you can do with your text, if you want it to stand out a bit more, down at the bottom here, um, you've got various little um, things you can do. I'm gonna click on this one down here that says layer style. 
and I'm going to click on blending options. Now this opens up this layer style box. Make sure you clicked in on the correct layer, so text for this one, and I can do, for example, bevel and emboss, and it will make things stand out a little bit more. And I can choose, you know, how much I want it to sort of stand out from the background. You can do drop shadows, all sorts of things you can do here. So this is well worth having a little play with to see how it makes your sort of text look. So it's quite a nice one to have a go at just to make your text sort of stand out a little bit more than perhaps it may do initially. So click on Bevel and Boss and click into anything you like and then when you're done you click OK. Now you might find that when you apply the effects you can't see them too obviously on the page. Now if you get that click on the layers behind just to remove them. So I just clicked on this little symbol here, the little eye symbol, and if I click on that it comes off. Now you can clearly see away from the background I've got this kind of beveling effect but when it's on top of the background, um, it kind of disappears. So if I want to edit it a little bit, I can double click on effects and I can change things around a little bit if I want to try and make it, um, you know, look a little bit more, um, a little bit of a stronger effect, if you like. So I can change layers. Uh, I can change blending modes on layers. And you can see there that has gone really sort of dark blue. Um, I can change it to lighten potentially and again, you know, see what happens. So the blending modes are really useful to see. I can try overlay uh, and again, that's kind of gone this sort of very faded blue. That's not going to particularly work for our project. Um, you can go to hard light, soft light and you can have a play, you know, see what works best for you. Um, you can have a look at the drop shadow, for example, and you think, OK, can't particularly see it. You know, maybe I'll increase the size of it. Um, I can change the blending mode. So you can really have a play with these tools and see what works best for your specific project. Um, I can go back to bevel and emboss and I think okay, I just double clicked in there. Let's maybe make the size a bit bigger and see what happens and now you can see that's really gone to quite a strong effect so I can perhaps back off a little bit until it looks more um, just more subtle but so it's the text is slightly three-dimensional there's a lot of little sliders you can play here now the best way to learn to do anything is just to you know click on things don't be afraid and try until you get something that you like um, I can sort of try the soften one a bit more to blend it a little bit and you can see that's kind of making it look less um, pixelated here. It's looking a bit smoother, perhaps take the size down a little bit. And yeah, you know, really have a play when you're doing this to get an effect that you're pleased with. And then when you're ready, just click OK. OK, that's it for this tutorial. Next time we'll look at blending some more text in and putting some shapes in here as well. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks for now.